Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Calvin's Consulting for the 1st of June, 2014. I am, of course, your lovely host and consultant, Calvin. And today, we're going to jump right on in because I have about a dozen questions I've decided to sum up here. What do you think of the Nintendo Affiliate Program? Is it a good idea? Is it even legal? For those of you that have not heard, Nintendo has recently announced that they will be doing a YouTube Affiliate Program to split advertising proceeds with video creators. That's a direct quote from their Twitter that's been translated. And, um, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, from what I understand, you will sign up to a Nintendo website, and put your channel name, and videos will be content ID'd, and the revenue will then go to Nintendo, who will split it with you, because they are very graceful overlords. <clears throat> However, we have seen similar things in the past. Uh, I believe it was last May, Nintendo tried a stunt where they content ID'd and took 100% of the revenue for all Nintendo games, which they promptly took back their stance on when there was huge public outcry uh, and basically vilification of Nintendo. So they have since decided to institute a new policy that they are currently working on. Now, this is a bit of a problem. Uh, there has already been some pretty nasty public outcry, and Nintendo seems to be walking into a PR disaster again. So I have no idea if they will actually go through with this. It's possible, but uh, we'll have to wait and see if Nintendo decides to retract their uh, stance on the issue again. Now, we need to cover whether or not, first off, this is illegal. I'd like to preface this by saying I am not a lawyer. Now, there is a problem with this. Uh, whilst I can't really go into the idea of whether or not Let's Plays are covered under a U.S. Copyrights Fair Use Clause, uh, because there is no case precedent to really cite on that, and it could really end up either way. Um, a lot of people will say, yes, it's perfectly fine, but again, it's a legal gray area, uh, so don't take people's advice who aren't lawyers on that. However, Nintendo has specifically stated that they will also go after reviews of their games. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I can bloody tell you that is illegal. Um, in fact, reviewers are explicitly protected under uh, fair use. It, it is one of the things. It's, assuming it is reviewing content, then yeah, even if it shows gameplay footage, Nintendo has jack all the right to it. Alright? Like, come on Nintendo. You're freaking crazy. If you try that, you might actually end up getting sued. I'd actually really like to see that, because then we would get a little bit of case precedent going. And we might actually know where the hell some of this shit stands. Um, but, that part I can tell you is illegal. As for Let's Plays and other forms of content, I can make no guarantees on. Now, let's cover on to whether or not this is a good idea. As I said, this is already going to be a PR nightmare for Nintendo. And, as it rightfully should be, as the Western way of thinking is significantly different. Now, recently I'm going to bring up the uh, Xbox Machinima scandal. Uh, and this is just because the, I find it amusing. Basically, X Microsoft paid people to play Xbox games on YouTube. Think about that for a second. Now think about what Nintendo's doing. It is, it's not hard to say that they are completely opposite ways of thinking. Now, why is this? Why are Western companies so much more interested in, uh, you know, the idea of Let's Plays, reviews, etc., etc.? And I think for that we have to visit Japanese culture. Now, in a lot of Asian cultures, they have a much stronger obey your elders idea. And this is probably, I think, what's causing this problem. Uh, this dissidence between the West and the East on this issue. Uh, what you have is probably two groups of lawyers. The younger lawyers who think that, you know, free advertising, it doesn't really matter, we don't have to go after anyone. Uh, and the older lawyers who are adamant that they deserve a cut, because it's their copyrighted work. Um, and the problem is, where in the West, the young and the old would have a debate that the young would inevitably win, because we know it's a good idea, I feel like in Japan, the old guard... Uh, can pretty much dictate what goes on, and the avant-garde, that is to say the younger people, uh, will silently agree with them. So again, what we have is the problem of the U.S. Congress. We have a bunch of 
older gentleman uh, deciding policies that will be implemented on the internet, which tends to work very poorly for everybody, let's face it. So we see a huge dissonance between, uh, you know, Japan and the West on this whole issue. And, you know, basically the West sees free advertising. Yeah, sure, you, you can make a little money on the side. It's not enough for us to give a crap about most of the time. Uh, whereas Nintendo sees that it's their right, their birthright, since they, you know, since their copyright work is involved. You want to advertise for us? Well, we're going to take a cut of that. Um, that's the different way that I, of course, demonized uh, the Japanese way of thinking. I am a Western person, and I do agree with the Western train of thought on this one. Believe me. Um, so we have to have a look at that and say, ah, there's the culture clash that's causing this whole issue. Now, as to whether or not this is a good idea, I am again going to state that this is a PR nightmare for Nintendo. And the end result is less advertising for Nintendo. In fact, I would dare say it is probably one of the major reasons why the Wii U is doing so poorly. You see, because of Nintendo's policy, you see far fewer, uh, you know, Let's Plays of things on YouTube. Uh, Mario Kart 8 is doing pretty good for itself. Uh, we're going to have to see how long that holds out, but, you know. So, no, Nintendo, this is not a good idea, and you should not be doing this. You're just hurting yourself in the long run. And as for legality, well, most of it's in a gray area. The whole part where they plan to go after reviewers, no, no, that's, that's pretty illegal. That is pretty illegal. Like, reviews are pretty well covered. So, I suppose that's that. So, let's get on to our second question, then. Galvin, what do you think is the worst thing that could possibly happen to YouTube and why? Now, and this uh, answer is going to surprise a lot of people. And the answer is, if it remains a monopoly. Now, a lot of people say, but hang on a second here. Being a monopoly is great for YouTube. It lets them do whatever they want. And while this is true, it's also going to be the final nail in their coffin. Because what is most dangerous to YouTube right now is lack of innovation and time. Time has this annoying tendency to move whether or not we really want it to. And I've talked about it before, but however, you have to remember the uh, theory of peak internet advertising, which basically says that CPM is going to go downhill, that's cost per mile, and ads are going to start generating less money. In fact, ads have been generating less money consecutively for quite some amount of time, so it's already showing, and since YouTube's current model relies entirely on advertising, well, time is not on their side, as it were. I mean, you ever wonder why the YouTube partnership program has been opened up to everyone and things like that? It's because they need to move more ads. There's no other way. It's in order to make even a comparable amount of money to what they used to make, they just have to keep moving ads. And this is just completely unsustainable. Not only now do they have non-full fill rates, which basically hurts, you know, larger channels. It means that we lose about 20 to 30 percent of our income. Uh, it also means that, well, they they are now not going to be able to sell any more ads. So their income is pretty much capped and will decrease slowly. This is why in the uh, recent creator update, in fact, I talked about this last time with the whole tip jar thing. They are looking to try and, you know, innovate and find other revenue sources. Because, of course, I'm going to tell you now, they will take a portion of the tip jar that they implement. Guaranteed. Um, and that's good. <laughs> it shows that YouTube is actually willing to innovate a little bit with the times. However, the problem I fear for YouTube is, as a monopoly, it's not going to be able to innovate, innovate fast enough. If you don't change quick enough, you're going to be losing a lot of money. You're going to be losing a lot of customers, you're going to be losing a lot of everything. And that's the particular problem. One of the good things about competition is it does actually drive innovation. And this means that you find new ways of doing things. Now, I can't necessarily talk about the future because, surprise, I can't see the future. But what I can tell you is that at the rate that YouTube adjusts to the current things, well, YouTube is just not going to survive very effectively. It's already leading out a bunch of money, and that's probably why they're looking for the ultimate monetization sources. Thankfully, YouTube's owned by Google and has a whole bunch of, you know, money to burn, but 
Google's entire entire empire is based on advertising, which is going downhill fast. Uh, so we're gonna have to see how YouTube adapts to things in the future. I have a feeling that actually competition would do good for YouTube, as as strange as it seems. You know, YouTube is moderately benevolent, so we're okay with it for now. But we have to remember that uh, what's the old phrase? A reed that bends in the wind breaks last and provides the most resistance or something? Something along those lines. Um, and really that's the key here. Uh, without competition, YouTube's rate of innovation is much slower. And that means if certain things are becoming unviable over time, such as, say, advertising, it's going to be far behind. Twitch is actually really good at this. Despite being pretty much a monopoly, they're pretty innovative. We have to look at, uh, let's see, how long has Twitch had a subscription button? About two years now, I'd say. Two to three years, I think. So we look at that and go, huh, all right. Then we realize, oh, we're only just kind of getting an even remotely similar system from YouTube, potentially four years down the line. Four years after Twitch. And that's the problem. Like, uh, we're seeing this as a particularly bad problem for YouTube. Staying as a monopoly is not viable for them. They will not bend to the wind, they will not provide the resistance, and they will break eventually. It will happen. And that's a scary thought. I mean, one day, Google might just say, because they've run out of advertising money, we're shutting YouTube down because it's not profitable. Some, it's, you know, I'm sure they're working to try and make YouTube as profitable as possible with fairly good reason. They're hoping uh, it'll be the investment of the future. So we're going to have to closely watch YouTube. So as strange as it is, you know, competition is not only good for us and as the consumer and you know, content creators and all that, it's astoundingly good for YouTube. If YouTube retains its current rate of innovation, which I blame on it being a monopoly, YouTube is doomed. It, it, it might last a while thanks to Google's capital, but let's face it here. YouTube can't exist and hemorrhage money the way it does, simply because it's a private entity. It can't just hemorrhage money for all eternity. It has to turn profit. And, you know, if you can't adapt and to new changing things in the uh, internet world, and continue to turn a profit, you're doomed. It's as simple as that. I really shouldn't have to go into too much more detail beyond that. I wish I could tell you, you know, what the future holds for innovations like that, but like I said, I'm not exactly psychic. I haven't seen the future, and I can't tell you what the future holds. But I can tell you this now, YouTube either needs to reform itself, uh, to, so that way it can change much quicker, or it has to get competition that forces it to change. Time is YouTube's biggest enemy right now. And you know what? You have to be cautious of that. With that, I think I'm going to be wrapping things up here. So, thank you everybody for listening. If you enjoyed yourself, don't forget to hit the like button. And of course, you can send me more questions at mailbox at kalevin.tv. That is mailbox at kalevin.tv. So, thank you everybody for listening. This has been your lovely consultant, Kalevin, signing off.